Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to give a quick introduction to Firestore security rules. So what are security rules and why do they exist? To understand why security rules are necessary, let's first understand what problem they are solving. Let's take for that our sample application that we have been developing so far and let's switch here to a larger window where we have the same application running. You must have noticed so far during the development of our course that we managed somehow to do data modification operations straight from our client directly to the database without the need to develop any server-side code, which goes against everything that we typically do while developing our backend under the form of a REST API. In the typical example of an application that uses a REST API, we do an HTTP request here from our client that is going to hit a server where our API is running. That server code will then decide if the request is valid or not, if it's authorized or not, and the request will either be accepted or denied by our REST backend API, and if the request is accepted, then the database modification operation will go through and it will be performed on the database. For example, let's do here a delete operation. Notice that I managed to delete the course successfully. It's no longer here present on this list, but I managed to do this without being authenticated. So anyone that has access to this application would be able to do database modification operations at will. This is of course not intended. What we want is our application to behave in a similar way to the REST API example that we gave previously. In the example of our REST API, the presence of the server enables us to control who gets to access the database. We can decide if a database modification or even a database read operation goes through depending on a whole series of different types of criteria. For example, we might require a user to be authenticated for a database modification or a database read to go through. We might require the user to have a certain role. And we might even require the user to be a specific user or belong to a specific list of users. All of these conditions can be easily implemented in a REST backend, but the problem is that we have to write that backend manually ourselves. There is no way to avoid that while developing a REST API. On the other hand, with Firebase, yes, it's very convenient to be able to trigger both reads and database modification operations straight from the browser client without the need to develop a custom backend. But it looks like while doing so, we have sacrificed the security of our application. It looks like that this application cannot be secure, that this idea of doing a database modification operation straight from the client is not feasible in production from a security standpoint. And this is of course not true. Yes, it's possible to secure an application like this one. And the way that we can do that is using Firestore security rules. Firestore security rules are the key ingredient that makes all of this solution work from a security standpoint. Firestore security rules are a series of declarative configuration security rules that we're going to learn how to write throughout this course that allow our backend, which is the Firebase server that we didn't have to write ourselves, to decide if a given request, read or write, should go through or not. This means that in order to write an application such as this one, with full CRUD transactions triggered straight from the client, all we have to do is to write the client-side code, the browser code, and we also need to write a series of declarative rules and deploy them to our Firestore server. Let's then have a look at what these Firestore security rules look like. We're going to switch back here to our workspace and we're going to go to the root of our project. Here, under the Firebase course folder, we're going to find here a firestore.rules file that was created a few lessons ago when we initialized our Firebase project. If we click on it, we're going to find this file. So this is our starting point for learning Firestore security rules. What we have here is a minimal example of what a very simple set of rules looks like for a given database. Firestore security rules are written in this format that looks a little bit like a mix between JSON and JavaScript. We're going to learn exactly how this syntax works throughout the course. 
right now let's just read this simple set of rules and understand how this works. As we can see, this configuration file defines what requests should be or not accepted in our Firestore database. So at runtime, whenever we do a database read or modification operation here from our client using Angular Fire, that request is going to get sent to the Firestore server. There, the server is going to use this set of configuration rules that we have deployed in the server to decide if the database read or modification request should be accepted or not. So how do we read this file? Well, let's start first at the beginning. We have here a rules version equals to statement. This statement is going to specify which rules version we are using here in our rules file. So at the time of recording of this course, the latest version is 2. Maybe when you are taking the course, it's already a higher number. Whatever the number is, uh, please don't worry because there are only minimal differences between these versions and most if not all of the concepts that we are about to talk about will still apply. Below the rules version statement, we have here a series of Cloud Firestore security rules. So there are different types of rules in the Firebase ecosystem. There are also, for example, Firebase storage rules. So this is why the service keyword and here the name of the service is important. This clearly identifies that these rules are for a Firestore database. Next, let's have a quick look at the Firestore rules themselves. So the rules that we have here always need a matching path. So as we know, in a Firestore database, every document has a path and we need to know to which documents each rule applies. So here, for example, this expression here corresponds to the root of our database. So in your Firestore rules file, you always need a top level rule like this with a match keyword and this expression here that targets the root of the Firestore database. Every Firestore rules file that you write needs to have this initial path at the top of the file. We can see here that linked to every rule match condition, there is a document path and this document path can have path variables that are defined here using this curly braces syntax. These variables can very conveniently be used to express complex rule conditions. We are going to learn exactly how to do that throughout the course. Right now, it's important to understand that the rule paths can have variables that can be used here to write the rules themselves. Now, all of this is going to be common to every rules file that you write. So now let's see at what is specific to this database. We can see that inside a given rule with a path expression, you can have other nested rules. So this is an important property to understand. Just like we can nest collections inside collections in a Firestore database, we can also nest rules inside each other. And what do we see here in this internal nested rule? Well, we have here a matching condition that is going to match every single document in the database. So what you see here is a rule wildcard. So that's the meaning of this double star condition. And inside this last match block, you have the Firestore security rules themselves. So in this case, we are matching every single document of the database and we are going to allow both read and write operations in all cases. So independently if the user is authenticated, independently if the user is an administrator and independently of the document that we are targeting in our database, we are going to allow all of the requests to go through. And that is the reason why here in our demo application, we have managed so far to edit data without being authenticated. Now, don't worry, I know that this is a lot of information and in the next few lessons, we are going to go through all of these concepts again, one by one. Firestore rules, the variables, the different types of conditions that we can write. We're going to cover that in detail, but right now I just wanted you to have an initial understanding of this set of initial security rules because these are the rules that you're going to find whenever you initialize a project. And these rules, maybe to your surprise, are being used in your local development environment already since many lessons ago. 
So if we check here on our terminal, I'm currently running here the Firebase emulator using this command here, npm run local dev. We can see that we have started the Firestore emulator and also the authentication emulator. Now look at what happens here in our log when I modify here the rules file and I hit save. As we can see, we get here a change detected and the rules were updated in our local development environment. So this is one of the major advantages of using the Firebase emulator is the ability to be able to develop these rules locally. Otherwise, we would have to deploy this to the Firebase production environment each time, which is not convenient at all, especially because sometimes it takes a minute or so for the rules to propagate, plus the deployment process. It's much easier to develop the rules locally here and reload them on the fly using the emulator. And to prove that the rules are indeed working, let's for example deny completely any access to the database. Let's just change this condition and set this to false. Our emulator has picked up this new set of rules that are now updated. So let's quickly see what happens if we now try to access our data using here the application running in a larger window. I'm going to reload the application and notice that now we can't even read data from the database. We get this error here that is essentially a access denied error. This is the error that currently shows locally using the Firebase local emulator. In production, the error would be slightly different, but still this is a security error. We can't access any data in our application anymore. Now let's have a look if we go back here to our set of rules and let's see that we can give multiple conditions for different type of operations. Let's allow all read operations, but let's deny all write operations. So let's split this in two separate rules that target the same document path with all the documents in the database due to the wildcard. Let's say allow write if false. So this means that our database is read only now. We should be able to read every single document in the database, but we should not be able to modify any document in the database. Let's try this out to see if that's the case. I'm going to reload here the application and it looks like we have here some good news. We can see that we can read the data. But notice now what happens if we try to delete it. If we try to delete a course, for example, we are going to get here error. We can see here the pop-up could not delete course and we see here a more useful error this time around, permission denied. This is the error being thrown by the Firestore local emulator that has detected that this request is not authorized due to the presence of this security rule. Let's now quickly summarize everything that we have learned in this lesson. So the key ingredient that allows a Firebase application to be secure are Firestore security rules. These are a set of security rules that run on the Firestore server that we configure in this special format. So we don't have to write backend code in order to secure our database. Instead, we simply provide this simple set of security rules and we deploy them to the database. Every security rule matches a given document path and it decides if a given request that can be a read or a write request can go through or not. Now, what types of rules can be written in this format? Well, all sorts of complex conditions can be expressed just like if you were writing the backend code yourself. You won't be limited in the amount of security rules that you can write using this format. It's very flexible. In our next few lessons, we are going to go again through all these concepts of how to write a rule and we're going to write the security rules for our Firebase application. We're going to allow the data to be modified by administrative users and allow everyone else to read the data. We are also going to implement a couple of other common use cases using security rules. We are going to learn how to create a white list of users, meaning that only users in a well-known list will be able to access the application. We are also going to learn how to use security rules to create a functionality similar to schema validation that exists on SQL databases. We are going to prevent the insertion of data in our database that does not follow a well-known format. 
So this lesson is just the beginning of our Firestore Security Rules deep dive. Let's then continue and learn how to write rules from scratch in our next lesson.